who conducted its uh, written test online on uh, the website interviewstreet.com and uh, the question was uh, completely regarding data structures and uh, the question was that there is uh, in a file there are there is a sequence of numbers and then after that the following lines there are a certain number of lines uh, in which there are num binary digits of the same number of uh, numbers as in the first line which uh, in which uh, one will indicate that the number can be swapped with all other numbers which have one in the in this line and likewise all other lines say for example uh, there is a set of number given 1 2 3 and after that we have a set of lines 0 1 1 1 0 1 and 0 0 0 this means that the first line 0 1 1 is the second and the third number can be exchanged the second line 1 0 1 means the first and the third number can be exchanged and so on for all the other lines given this you have to find out that after uh, using all the possible sequences of uh, exchange between the numbers on the first line what is the smallest number you can generate out of the uh, sequence so uh, the concept uh, to be used was that uh, the first line of numbers are the nodes and you can construct nodes of a graph using those numbers and all the lines after that you can use those lines to construct an edge between the numbers that can be swapped and at the end of reading the file you will end up with a graph in which there are certain number of nodes and certain number of edges so you have to find the smallest number out of using this graph so what you do is you begin with uh, the node and you search uh, you go along the depth and sort this depth in the uh, ascending order and do this for all the possible depths you have uh, in the graph and you end up with the number which is the smallest uh, for that given sequence and these uh, given exchanges and you have to return that number so this was a one hour uh, test online and the timer was set on the website itself and that's it. The interview, we, there were three rounds uh, and there were 11 students coming from different colleges in India. Four others from uh, BIT Mishra, four from uh, ISM Dhanbad and three of us. The first round of interview and the second round of interview after which there were a shortlisting of six students uh, in which I was fortunate enough to get into and then there was another round of interview after which I could not make it and unfortunately that was the final round. I'll tell you about the first round. The first round of interview was, every, the, all the rounds of interviews were in primarily in data structures and algorithms. The first round of interview was of some 45 minutes to one hour and uh, there were two questions. The first question was of mutual friends. The, they always talked about real life scenarios at the company. They said that there are two users on Facebook and they have certain friends. So how do you determine the mutual friends with, uh, with those with, in the two people? So we took the question, we broke it down to the level of finding common elements in two areas. And then uh, you begin with giving your answer uh, with the naive approach that you take an element and compare it with the elements in the second area. And uh, then he asked me the complexity of the algorithm I described and then he forced me to improve the complexity every step after other. And then I said that, uh, sir, if we sort the array, it would be reducing the complexity. So uh, we sort both the arrays in say m log n and m log n time and then we do the searching. Then again I was uh, up in linear searching. He said, me, can you think some of something else? And then I tried applying uh, partition search and he again he asked me the complexity and he said I want you to improve more and then I put the approach of what we do in merge sort we take the element and uh, we put it and we move the pointers in both the arrays uh, and the pointer in one of the arrays uh, does not need to be traversed back to the first pointer likewise you take two pointers on the two arrays and then compare the elements if the elements uh, match then you take it in the result array if they do not match, you move the pointers and for all the uh, all the matches you return the result and you have to traverse the minimum of the two lists and not uh, making uh, m into n, m square n comparisons. The second question they asked me was uh, the popular uh, concept, the person you may know. When you use Facebook you see that uh, you are suggested some friends and that friend suggestion is based on the number of mutual friends you have with that user. So the question was how do you find the suggestions, how do you rank the users based on the number of mutual friends. So the first approach uh, I had was uh, we take the friends of friends of uh, this user and then we uh, compare it with 
all the other user, other friends of this user, from which we can determine the mutual friends. But this approach was uh, not a, it, it was giving a very bad complexity because we had to make very large number of comparisons. And then he said me, you can give me a better approach. And I said, sir, we can use a tree structure. Uh, what I did was, I take the friends of friends of this, say A is, a new, a is a user, and then he has a friend X, and X has some friend F1, F2, F3. So I take friend F1, I put it in the tree. I take friend F2, I start constructing a binary tree out of uh, the friends. Of course, uh, there is a key data in the satellite data, so the entire construction ba is based on the key data. And then I go to the friend Y of A, and then I take his friend, say, P1, P2, P3. I take P1, I insert into it into the tree. Then uh, at one point I might find that uh, the friend has already been inserted into the tree because he's a friend of some other friend of A. So I increase the count of that uh, node instead of making an insertion. So after this when I end up uh, traversing all the friends of friends of this user, I'll have this tree which is uh, a tree of all the friends with their uh, number of, uh, the number of mu times they are mutual friends to other users. So now you have to transform this tree into a tree which is sorted based on the number of mutual friends and not on the key. So transforming the tree is of linear time and therefore the solution. And then he said me, can you suggest me anything else? And I said uh, we could uh, use heap. Heap is a data structure as you know uh, in which the maximum element automatically comes to the top. And uh, I suggested that inserting the friends into a heap and putting the maximum at the top will automatically sort the entire list in terms of uh, the largest number of mutual friends so that could be one of the possible solutions so he said me okay fine uh, we can do with the answer and he said me uh, he said me anything you want to ask so I had a question with uh, his question I said uh, which of these solutions uh, do you think is better then he said that it totally depends on the uh, factors of the user if the number of friends are very large the tree might work well or the heap might work well so both the solutions are correct but uh, their application is very specific to the factors or attributes of the user and he said that uh, that is the first round and you may leave. After the first round, uh, for all the 11 students, then we started with the second round. The second round was also on the similar pattern. Uh, we It was almost 45 minutes to one hour and every student was appearing it in the turn. Uh, the question was common to all the students in all the rounds and uh, the question for this second round was, there are a certain number of events with their own start time and end time. So you have to determine on a given timeline what is the on what point of time do we have the maximum number of events. So uh, this question, I began with saying that if we break the timeline into discrete timings and at each each time we calculate the number of events at that point of time traversing all the events, we could find the number of events at each point of time and then return the maximum of the number of events and at, a, at a given point of time. So uh, this approach would take if we make t breakings of the timeline and there are n number of events, it takes uh, nt number of uh, uh, traversals and he wanted me to improve over the complexity. So I said sir we could, uh, this, this took me a whole lot of thinking which took the entire 45 minutes and then I answered uh, that we could take a, a linked list with initial node uh, say 0 to t in, with, in the limit of the time in which, in which we want to calculate the number of events. So after this we take first event, we read the start time and end time of the event and based on that start time and end time we break the linked list in two nodes and we make a count that one event be between this time to this time and zero in this time. Say this event is uh, from time t1 to t2, so we break the node into three nodes, uh, zero to t1, no events, t1 to t2, one event and t2 to t is no events. Again we read the next event and we make the insertion in the node uh, linked list accordingly breaking the nodes. And when all the events are read and the linked list is prepared, we know from what time to what time do we have uh, the uh, number of events and from which we can determine the maximum number of events. Uh, the approach to this question came from him saying that, uh, say you have broken the timeline into a number of pieces uh, and there are five events stretching from time T1 to T2 and you have broken time in T1 to T2 and every uh, time is storing the same number of events because all the events in that time are lying from T1 to T2. So that is consuming space, so you should re reduce space, uh, to, uh, which made me answer this uh, solution. And this was the second round.